الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين رب شهر صدري ويسل لأمري وحل الأختة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب زدني علما رب زدني علما آمين يا رب العالمين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to a yet another exciting course from Team Sifia. This course content has been created under the guidance of Sheikh Mir Asadullah Qadri and I am a member of Team Sifia, going to be your trainer today. Together, you and I will go into this exciting journey of learning about this important concept of Sahih Iman. So, welcome aboard. Yazid bin Mawiyah this course content is divided into the following lectures. Introduction Yazid bin Mawiyya ibn Abu Sufyan has been a draconian figure in the history of Islam under whose rule Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his family members and 72 associates were massacred in Karbala. Later, Yazid killed thousands of Sahaba, Tabayin and Muslims in Mecca and Medina, ransacked the Prophet Wasallam's mosque and burnt Kaaba. A brief account of his life and evil deeds have been described in this course. Yazid bin Mawiyya Yazid ibn Mawiyya ibn Abu Sufyan was born on July 20th, 647, 25H to Maisun bint Bajdal al-Kulaybi al Nasrania, a Jacobite Christian from Kalb tribe in Syria. References Ibn Hajar, Ad Dahabi, Ahmad, etc. It is reported that Muawiyah and whose marriage to Maisun in 646, when he was 45 years old and working as governor of Syria province, was politically motivated as she was the daughter of a prominent chief of Kalb tribe. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu had married other women before. After marriage, Maisun remained with her tribe. It is recorded in authentic history books that one of his other wives named Katwa, who was staying with him in the governor's palace, accompanied him when he went on a naval expedition in 650-28H. Early history of Masyun is not available except that she was a Christian woman from Kalb tribe. It is reported that she gave birth to Yazid in 647. It is not known if Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu knew the birth of Yazid or visited her to see Yazid after his birth. It is also not known why she remained with her tribe after marriage. Yazid grew up among Christians in their neighborhoods all through his childhood and adolescence. There is no confirmed account if Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu had children except Yazid who was born to Maisun. In 661, after the assassination of Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and abdication of caliphate by Hadrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu declared himself as caliph in an impressive ceremony conducted by him for this purpose in Damascus. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was 60 years old then. It is probably around this time Yazid joined his father in Damascus. Christian population of Syria under Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu had full autonomy. Their tribal culture was honored and they had their own laws based on their age-old Christian customs. Even judicial matters were dealt with in accordance with their own laws and by their own church fathers. Christians used to pay a poll tax to the government for policing them against their enemies and to ensure peace among various Syrian tribes. Information about Yazid's childhood is sketchy in history books. Most probably, he came to live with his father in 662 when he was 15 years old. Muawiyah anhu, then made arrangements for training of Yazid in tribal warfare. Yazid was not allowed to mix up with Arab children living in Damascus. Muawiyah anhu, decided Yazid to be his heir apparent 
and future king when Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was 61 years old and Yazid was 16 years old. Ibn Khaldun wrote, Yazid's time of governance can be seen as fisk and debauchery and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu is to be blamed for that. Yazid was born to a Christian mother and stayed with Christian relatives all through his childhood and adolescence. He did not see Islamic surroundings even when he was brought to his father's palace in Damascus. Muawiyah anhu used to live like a Byzantine or Kisra king and did not bother much and used haram in his day-to-day -day living and in his food. Ahmad, Abu Dawood, Abdul Aziz, Muhaddid, Tahelvi, Ibn Asakir, etc. In these circumstances, Yazid did not learn Islam or Islamic morals in the company of Muslims in an Islamic environment that prevailed in Medina and Makkah at that time. This was the reason he remained a drunkard, a womanizer like most of his Christian tribal relatives. Ibn Khate wrote, Traditions inform us that Yazid loved worldly vices, would drink, listen to music, kept the company of boys with no facial hair, young boys, civilized expression of pedophilia. Yazid played drums. He enjoyed making dogs, frogs, bears and monkeys fight. Every morning, he used to get intoxicated and used to bind monkey with the saddle of a horse and make the horse run. Al-Bidaya wal Nihaya, Vikr Yazid bin Muawiya, Volume 8, page 1169. Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups tried to mislead innocent people into believing that Yazid was a truthful caliph and Imam Hussain anhu, was a traitor. Astaghfirullah. Compare Yazid with Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Look at Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu's family, his closeness with the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa his Islamic deeds, his Islamic ideals, and his sacrifices in the cause of Islam. It will help you in deciding who had strayed and who was on the right path of Islam, who was the protector and who was the traitor of Islam. The Ubandis claim that they are the army of Yazid. The picture shows them protesting for Yazid and Ibn Ziyad to be declared as martyrs in the place of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The picture shows Darul Ifta Dioban, India, issued fatwa number 2257 claiming Yazid to be Amir al mumini and 6th Khalifa Rashid. Yazid is a lovable person for Salafis. They have built schools, roads and other institutions in his name in Saudi Arabia. The picture shows Yazid bin Muawiyah Government High School in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Ahle Sunnah Opinions About Yazid Yazid's reign as head of state was short and painful for Muslim Ummah. In his first year of rule, he ordered massacre of Imam Hussain along with his family and 72 followers. In the second year, he attacked the Holy Kaaba and set it on fire. Earlier in the same year, he ransacked Medina, including Masjid al Nabawi, and massacred thousands of people, including the entire generation of Sahaba and Tabayeen. He was a power-hungry, selfish, arrogant, and spoiled man. First, Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani wrote, Loving and glorifying Yazid is not done except by a heretic, apostate, who has void belief because Yazid had such characteristics that his lover described to be faithless. To love and hate just for the sake of Allah is a sign of faith. Al-Imta bil al-Arbain al Madbainatus sama. Imam Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani, Dar al-Qutub al-Ilmiya, Pirat, Lebanon, 1997, page 96. Ibn Hajar also wrote, All Ahle Sunnah agree that Yazid was a fasir, transgressor, fajir, debaucher, and a drunkard. Al-Waqidi, 748-822, recorded a narration. The people who had seen Yazid said, Verily, we opposed Yazid, fearing Allah would rain stones down, on us because Yazid considered nikah with mothers and sisters permissible and drank alcohol. At dahabi narrates that when Abdullah bin Kuzay returned from Damascus, he stated that Yazid performs zina with his close female kins. We better start a movement to oppose Yazid, otherwise stones may rain down on us. This is the reason Ibn Hajr Makki calls Yazid one of the most debased men in history. Second. 
Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Ahmad all agree that it is permissible to curse Yazid for his atrocities on Muslims. Third, Imam Bukhari in his book Tariq Kabir listed biographical details of 213 people named Yazid but he did not make any mention of Yazid ibn Muawiyah. This shows that the Imam did not want to mention the name of a person who is Lanati. Alright, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. Fourth, Alusi al-Baghdadi wrote, and I say what is prevalent over my mind, that Yazid Khabir did not testify to the apostleship of the Holy Prophet According to me, it is correct to curse a person like Yazid, although one cannot imagine a Fasid like him, and apparently he never repented. The possibility of his repentance is weaker than the possibility of his faith, Iman. Along with Yazid, Ibn Ziyad, Ibn Sa'ad and his group shall also be included. Verily, may Allah's curse be upon all of them, their friends, their supporters, their group and upon everyone who inclines towards them until Qiyamah and until an eye sheds a tear for Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Tafsir Ru al-Mani, volume 26, page 73. Fifth. At Dahabi wrote about Yazid as follows Yazid was a disgusting Nasibi, those who hate Ahlebayt. He drank wine and did evil. He started his kingdom with the killing of Imam Hussain and ended it with the incident of Al Harra, siege of Medina, which also makes him directly liable for Lana as Saleh a Hadith proof. Hence, the people hated him. He was not blessed in his life, and many took up arms against him after Imam Hussain such as the people of Medina. They rose for the sake of Allah. Siyar Al-Alam an nabula Volume 4, pages 37-38 at dahabi also wrote Ziyad Harthi narrated Yazid gave me alcohol to drink. I had never drunk alcohol like that before and I inquired where he had obtained its ingredients from. Yazid replied It is made of sweet pomegranate, Isfahan's honey, Hawa's sugar, Taif's grapes, and Burda's water. Ahmad bin Masama narrated, Once Yazid drank alcohol and started to dance. Suddenly he fell down and his nostril began to bleed. Siyar al-Alam wa al-Nubala, volume 4, page number 37. Sixth, Jalaluddin Suyuti wrote that Yazid was involved in sacking Medina and killing a generation of the companions and in desecrating and robbing Medina. After creating carnage in Medina, in the incident of Harra, the army of Yazid proceeded to Makkah to confront Hadrat Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu. In Makkah, the army of Yazid committed unthinkable war crimes. Even Kabatullah was heavily damaged in Yazid's military operation. It is in Hadith, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, whoever terrifies the people of Medina, upon him is the curse of Allah, that of his angels and that of all the people of the world. Sahih Muslim 7. Ibn Khatir wrote in his Tariqh under events of 63 AH 682 AD as follows. Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, O people, 
your companions have been killed. Yazid committed a mistake, and that too, a disgusting one, by ordering Muslim bin Uqba to make Medina, Muba, free for all for three days. This was his biggest and ugliest blunder. Many Sahaba and their children were slaughtered, as it has been mentioned earlier that Yazid made Ubaidullah ibn Ziyad kill the grandson of Rasulullah Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his companions in Karbala. In a swift three days rampage in Medina, heinous crimes were committed about which nobody knows except Allah. Yazid wanted to secure his government by sending Muslim bin Uqba but Allah did against his wishes and punished him. Verily, Allah killed him likewise. Allah made grip over the oppressing towns. No doubt his grip is painful and strict. Al-Bidaya wal Nihaya, Volume 8, Page 283 Misconceptions about Yazid Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups misquote and misinterpret Quranic verses, a hadith and historical events to exonerate Yazid from the serious crimes he committed during his reign. We have discussed below some of these misconceptions for the benefit of our students. First, the Permanent Committee for Scholarly Research and Ifta, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, appointed by the government of Saudi Arabia, issued a fatwa about Yazid in which they said, loving this type of person is unlawful because Yazid performed actions that testified to his fist and injustice and these are evident from his biography and in matters related to Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and the people of Medina when they were killed in the incidents of Al-Harra. This fatwa was issued when Abdul Aziz ibn Baz was the chairman of the committee and Abdul Razak Afifi was the deputy chairman. Fatwa number 1466, part 3, page 398. The above fatwa establishes the fact that Yazid was responsible for the killing of Imam Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Karbala and other Sahaba in Medina. The ruling family of Saudi Arabia and Salafi scholars appointed by the government are the ultimate authority for Salafis, the Obandis and their like-minded groups. When their godfathers have issued a fatwa attesting the fisk and injustice and unlawful killings of Sahaba in the hands of Yazid, then Salafis, the Obandis and like-minded should not write radiallahu ta'ala anhu with Yazid's name and also they should not call him Amirul Mu'mini. But it is surprising to note that Salafis, the Obandis and like-minded groups go out and out in defending and exonerating Yazid from the crimes he committed during his reign. Hard luck for these groups. Needless to say that these groups will be raised with Yazid on the Day of Judgment and will go with him to the assigned destination reserved for Yazid. There cannot be two opinions in this context. Second, Salafis drumbeat with Imam Ahmad, Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Ghazali, etc. preferred to keep silent about Yazid. They claim that their silence is a testimony that Yazid was a pious Khalifa. This is a misleading argument. Read the following facts. First, Fatwa of Imam Ahmad. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal was asked by his son that a group of people, Qaum, attribute us to be with Yazid. He replied, O son, whoever believes in Allah, how can they have any association with Yazid? And why should he not be cursed, Lanat, when Allah sends Lanat on him in his book? The son asked, Where did Allah send Lanat on him in his book? The Imam replied, In this saying of Allah. It is in Quran. Do you then have the sign that if you get the authority, spread disorder in the land and sever your ties of kinship? These are they whom Allah has cursed and made them deaf from the truth and made their eyes blind. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, verses 22 to 23. And then said, is there any greater tribulation, fasad, than the assassination of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu? References Ibn Hajar Makki in Al Sabaikh Al Muhriqa, page 333, Tafsir Mazhari, volume 8, page 434, Imam Al Barzanji in Al Ishaq, Qadi Abu Yalain, Mutamad Al Usul, Ibn Al Jawzi, etc. Second, Imam Alusi wrote, reported by Al Barzanji, in Al-Isha, 
and al haytami narrates it in al sabaikh that imam ahmad ibn hanbal's son abdullah narrated that he said to his father that he had seen people saying that they love yazid to this imam ahmad said for a person having belief in allah there is no reason to love yazid why should the person not be cursed who had been cursed by allah in the quran to this abdullah asked where in the quran had allah cursed yazid Imam Ahmad replied quoting this verse Do you then have the sign that if you get the authority spread disorder in the land and sever your ties of kinship these are they whom Allah has cursed and made them deaf from the truth and made their eyes blind Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam verses 22 to 23 it is they whom Allah has cursed Alusi Ruh Almani volume 26 page 227 47 is to 22 to 23 third salafis deobandis and their like-minded groups misinterpret the silence sukut of imam abu hanifa on the issue of yazid imam's silence is not negative rather it is positive on yazid's condemnation and his kufr our understanding is based on the following episode when imam zaid ibn ali ibn husain radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu fought with the umayyad ruler hisham Imam Azam Abu Hanifa gave a fatwa that whoever fights on the side of Zaid ibn Ali ibn Husayn radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu is like fighting on the side of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam on the day of Badr in this episode the imam is equating Umayyad Hisham bin Abdul Malik with Kuffar because Imam Zaid ibn Ali ibn Husayn radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu was at war with him Yazid was indeed worse than Hisham Therefore we can interpret Imam Abu Hanifa's sukut silence as his agreement on kufr of Yazid This is similar to Ammar Yasir hadith Bukhari in which the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared the people fighting against Hadrat Ali radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu in the battle of Siffin were unjust rebels who invited people to hell During Imam Abu Hanifa's time there were thousands of people who used to curse Yazid If Imam did not agree on sending Lana curse on Yazid he would have objected on this widespread practice during his time he remained silent thus his silence is the agreement rather than rejection fourth Imam Ghazali 1058 to 1111 wrote in Ihya Ulum al-Din if it is asked is it permissible to say may Allah curse the murderer of Imam Hussein radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu or may Allah curse the one who ordered the murder of Imam Hussein radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu we say that the correct opinion is to say if the murderer of Imam Hussein radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu died before repenting then may Allah curse him the imam would have mentioned a reference if Yazid repented before his death the imam did not have any such reference available in the entire Islamic literature also there was nothing tangible in front of the imam to regard Yazid as pious khalifa because of his outrageous evil deeds therefore his silence is more inclined towards yazid's fisk and fujur rather than treating him as a person who repented allama alusi al baghdadi wrote it is correct to curse a person like yazid al khabit although one cannot imagine a fasikh like him and apparently he never repented the possibility of yazid's repentance is weaker than the possibility of his faith iman tafsir ru al mani Volume 26 page 73 All right this concludes the lecture Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning
Third, Salafis claim that Yazid was not responsible for the massacre of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and his companions radiallahu ta'ala anhu majameen. It was Ibn Ziyad who killed the Imam. Authentic Islamic literature accounts confirm that when Yazid wrote to Ibn Ziyad that he should go to Makkah and besiege Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he refused and said, I will not combine two things for a fasiq, Yazid. I have already killed the son of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's daughter, Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, and now he asks me to wage a war on Baytul Haram. It is also reported that when Ibn Ziyad martyred Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, his mother Marjana said to him, May you die. What have you done and what crime have you committed? She also scolded him severely. Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu used to say in his speeches that Yazid was a fraud, drunkard, one who does not perform salah and stays with singing women. al Bidaya wal Nihaya, volume 8, page 279. Salafis, Diopandis and their like-minded groups also claim that when the news of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and whose martyrdom reached Yazid, his family wept. Yazid said, Curse of Allah be on Ibn Ziyad. If Ibn Ziyad was a relative of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and who, he would have never killed him. I would have accepted the submission of Kufans without the killing of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala and who. Salafis also say, that Yazid accorded a gracious hospitality to the family members of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and arranged for their return to Medina with honor. The above is an attempt by Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups to exonerate Yazid of his evil crimes. We have provided below undeniable evidence from authentic history books to prove that the above claims are lies and misinterpretation of facts. First, if Yazid had been truthful in his claim, and if he and his family sincerely wept for Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu, then he should have at least removed Ibn Ziyad from the governor's position. History is a witness that Ibn Ziyad remained the governor of Kufa and he even outlived Yazid. Ibn Ziyad was killed by people during the insurrection of Al-Mukhtar long after the death of Yazid. Second, Ibn Khatir wrote, When Yazid wrote to Abdullah Ibn Ziyad, that he should go to Makkah and besiege Abdullah ibn Zubair radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he refused to do so and said, By Allah, I will not combine two things for a fasid, Yazid. I have already killed the son of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa daughter on his order and now he asks me to wage war on Baytul Haram. However, when Abdullah ibn Ziyad martyred Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu and brought his head to be delivered to Yazid, his mother, Marjana, said to him, May you die. What have you done and what crime have you committed? She also scolded him severely. al Bidaya wal Nihaya, Volume 8, page number 279. Third, Ali ibn Athir wrote, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu replied to a letter of Yazid stating, You killed Hussein ibn Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, as well as the youth from Banu Abdul Muttalib who were beacons of guidance. Tariq Kamil, Ali ibn Khatir. Fourth, after Ahle Bayt Athar returned from Damascus, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu said, We discern the believers from the Munafiqeen via their regards for Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Tariq al Khulafa by Jalaluddin Suyuti. Fifth, Ibn Khatir wrote, Ibn Asakir writing on Yazid stated, When Hussein radiallahu ta'ala anhu's head was brought before Yazid, he recited the couplets of Ibn Zubairi the Kafir. I wish my ancestors of Badr were here to see the severed head of the rebellious tribe, Bani Hashim. al Bidaya wa Nihaya, Volume 8, page 204. Sixth, Khadi Thanaullah wrote, When Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu was killed and the news reached Yazid, he said, Had my predecessors lived, they would have seen how I took revenge from the family of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and Bani Hashim. The couplet which Yazid made had this in the end, I will avenge Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wasallam for whatever he did with my ancestors in Badr. Yazid even declared alcohol as permissible and in praise of it he said, if liquor is haram in the deen of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, then take it to be permissible according to the deen of Isa ibn Maryam alayhi salam. Tafsir al-Mazhari, Volume 5, pages 211 to 212. Yazid was born in 647, 
15 years after the death of Prophet Sallallahu to my son, a Christian woman, and he spent his childhood with his Christian relatives before he joined Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu in Damascus. In Damascus, he was trained under the guidance and direct supervision of his father and was groomed to take up the responsibility of ruling the state after his father. We fail to understand as to who could have told him about the pre-Islamic situation of Makkah and how many Makkan pagans died in Badr. Who instilled the hatred of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and ahl bayt in Yazid's mind? Who convinced him that their rule was for the purpose of taking revenge from Prophet Muhammad sallallahu and his ahl bayt for the killing of their relatives in Badr? All right, this concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. Fourth, Salafis claim that Yazid treated the family of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu with hospitality. Read the following authentic accounts to know the facts. Ibn Khatir wrote, First, Abi Hamza al-Shami from Abdullah al-Yamani who narrated from Qasim bin Najat that he said, When Imam Hussain alayhi salam's head was brought in the court of Yazid, he placed his stick on Imam alayhi salam's teeth and said, the difference between him and me is, as Al-Hammam said, the swords are broken on the heads of those people who go against us and they are disobedient and cruel. Abu Barza as salmi said to him, By Allah, your stick is touching the place which was kissed by the Prophet ﷺ. For sure, when Imam Hussain ﷺ will arrive on the Day of Judgment, then Prophet ﷺ will be his intercessor. Whereas, when you come, your intercessor will be Ibn Ziyad. Then he rose up, turned his back towards Yazid and left. Second, it is narrated through Haris bin Kaab from Fatima bint Ali radiallahu ta'ala anha that she said, when we were made to sit in front of Yazid, he had some mercy upon us. At that time, a man from Syria came and asked Yazid to grant her. He meant me and I was a beautiful woman. Hearing him, I started to tremble and I thought, that maybe this was allowed for them. I held the clothes of my sister Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was elder and more intelligent than me. She knew that it was not allowed. She said to the man, By Allah, you have lied and said a lowly thing. This thing is not allowed between you and her. Yazid got angry and said to Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha, No, you have lied instead, because by God, she is halal for me, and if I want to do it with her, then I may do so. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha said, By Allah, it is definitely not allowed for you except if you leave our ummah and choose a deen other than Islam. With Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha's explanation, Yazid became red in anger and said, You are challenging me is a proof of your brother and father being expelled from Islam. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha replied, Your father, your grandfather and you were guided through the deen of Allah, deen of my father, Deen of my brother and Deen of my maternal grandfather. Yazid said, O enemy of Allah, you have lied. Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha said, What kind of Amirul Mu'mineen are you that you abuse by being one? Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha said that Yazid became speechless. The Syrian again asked for the lady. Yazid said to the Syrian man, Get lost. May God give you painful death. Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, 
volume 8. History of Islam has recorded that fearing people's revolt, Yazid treated Imam Hussein alayhi salam's family with some caution. He tried to convince them that he did not order the killing of Imam alayhi salam, and it was Ibn Ziyad who killed the Imam alayhi salam. However, history is a witness that Yazid did not take any action against Ibn Ziyad, not even sent a letter of displeasure at the killings, and Ibn Ziyad remained as governor of Kufa for a long time. Obviously, it was a false pretext of Yazid to hide his crimes. The famous Ahl Sunnah Imam al Barzanji, 1640-1703, the chief mufti of Medina, buried in Jannatul Baqi, wrote in his book Ishrat al sa as follows. It was a false pretext of Muawiyah anhu to justify his fight with Hadrat Ali anhu, under the guise of revenge for the murder of Hadrat Uthman anhu, because when he completely attained the power and became ruler of the whole state, he never opened the case of the murder of Hadrat Uthman anhu, and did not arrest the murderers, though he claimed earlier that the killers were still around. This proves that all his fight was for worldly rule, under the deceit of revenge for the murder. Fifth, there is a hadith in Bukhari in which Prophet Muhammad said, The first Muslim army who will invade Caesar's city will be rewarded with Jannah. Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups falsely claim that Yazid was part of that army. Read the following facts. Um Aram radiallahu ta'ala anha Arab News is the national newspaper of Saudi Arabia. It is also the most popular Saudi Arabian English newspaper. The newspaper published an article on June 2, 2011, titled Women Companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Um Haram radiallahu ta'ala anha, traveling by sea for jihad. We have provided below a gist of that article for our students. Um Haram bint Milhan radiallahu ta'ala anha was the sister of Um Sulaim radiallahu ta'ala anha. Both sisters were very close to the Prophet wasallam, and he used to visit them in their homes. Um Haram ta'ala anha was married to Ubada ibn al-Samid, one of the earlier Muslims from Medina. He was one of the 12 men who gave the Prophet wasallam the first pledge by the Ansar for unwavering support. A year later, he joined 73 men of the Ansar who gave the second and most solemn pledge of support which led to the immigration of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions from Makkah to Medina. The Prophet ﷺ used to visit Um Haram anha at home and if it was midday and he was tired, he might have a nap at her house. It is in Sahih Muslim that Anas ibn Malik, her nephew, reports, The Prophet ﷺ visited us and there was only myself, my mother, Um Sulaim anha and my maternal aunt, Um Haram anha. He, the Prophet wasallam, said, Let us pray in congregation. No obligatory prayer was due. He led us in prayer. When we finished, he prayed for us, members of our household, praying Allah to grant us of every good thing in this life and in the life to come. There is another related hadith in Bukhari as follows. Narrated Khalid bin Madan anhu, that Umair bin al-Aswad al-Anasi anhu told him that he went to Ubada bin al-Samit anhu while he was staying in his house at the seashore of Hims, currently Homs, Syria, with his wife Um Haram anha. Umair anhu said, Um Haram anha informed us that she heard the Prophet wasallam saying, Paradise is granted to the first batch of my followers who will undertake a naval expedition. Um Haram ta'ala anha added, I said, O Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wasallam, will I be amongst them? He replied, You are amongst them. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam then said, The first army amongst my followers who will invade Caesar's city will be forgiven their sins. I asked, Will I be one of them? O Allah's Apostle sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he replied in the negative. Bukhari, Volume 4, Book 52, Hadith number 175. There are two points in the above hadith. A. The first batch of Muslims who will undertake a naval expedition and B. The first Muslim army who will invade Caesar's city. Both have glad tidings of paradise. Alright, 
This concludes the lecture. Take a breather and we will get back in a minute to continue this journey of learning. A. The first batch of Muslims who will undertake a naval expedition. Arab news reported that by the time the third caliph, Uthman ibn Affan anhu, was in power, the Muslims had taken over Syria, Palestine, and Iraq. Yet, the Byzantine Empire continued to launch raids on the new Muslim land. Some of these raids started from Cyprus using ships. Uthman anhu, therefore, decided to invade Cyprus. He instructed his governor in Syria, Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, to prepare for such an attack. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu sent a force to Cyprus. Um Haram radiallahu ta'ala anha was all the time looking for the opportunity to join an army traveling by sea. When she realized that preparations were underway for the attack, she decided to join the army. The fleet set off and when they landed in Cyprus, the Cyproids decided to negotiate peace. A treaty was signed with the Muslim state. Later, when Um Haram radiallahu ta'ala anha was riding a mule in Cyprus, she fell off and died. She was buried in Cyprus in year 27H, 649. Her tomb is known as Hala Sultan Teki Shrine in Cyprus. People of Cyprus used to refer to it as the grave of the pious woman. Even non-Muslims used to visit her grave and pray for rain near it, knowing that she was a most devout woman. The above account of the Arab news, taken from authentic Islamic history records, confirms that the first naval expedition of Muslims for jihad was carried out somewhere in 647, 25H, in which Um Haram radiallahu ta'ala anha traveled. Yazid was not a part of this travel as he was not born yet. Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu also did not travel in this expedition. It is reported in history books that Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu traveled in a larger naval fleet built by Muslims along with his wife, Katwa, in a later expedition in 650-28H. He was also part of another naval expedition in 654-32H. Tarikh Kamil, Volume 3, page 25 and Al-Bidaya Van Nihaya, Volume 7, page 179. B. The first Muslim army who will invade Caesar's city. First, First Muslim army who attacked Caesar's city was sent by Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam dispatched 3000 army personnel under the command of Zayd ibn Haritha radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. This battle is known as the Battle of Muwatta, fought in 629, 5 Jumada 1st, 8H, near the village of Muwatta, east of the Jordan River in Karak governorate of Roman Empire between Islamic forces and forces of the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire. Reference the Sealed Nectar, Islamic University of Medina, Darus Salam Publications. Second, during the Caliphate of Hadrat Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hadrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Hadrat Uthman radiallahu ta'ala anhu, many cities of the Eastern Roman Byzantine Empire were taken over and Syria, Jordan, Egypt, Palestine was under Muslims' rule. Third, in 644-42H, the Muslim army attacked Rome on their way to Constantinople. al Bidaya Van Nihaya, Volume 8, page number 24. Fourth, in 645-43H, Muslims attacked Rome 
under the leadership of Basar bin Arta radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and fought their way to Constantinople. Tarikh ibn Khaldun, volume 3, page number 9, Al-Bidaya wa Nihaya, volume 8, page number 24. Fifth, in 646, 44H, Muslims under the command of Abdul Rahman bin Khalid bin Walid radiyallahu ta'ala anhu entered Rome and spent winter there. Basar bin Arta radiyallahu ta'ala anhu fought with Romans through the sea. Tarikh Kamil, volume 3, page number 298. It is in Hadith. Aslam Abi Imran radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said, We went out on an expedition from Medina with the intent to attack Constantinople. Abdul Rahman bin Khalid bin Walid radiyallahu ta'ala anhu was the leader of our group. Sunan Abu Dawood, volume number 2, Hadith number 2512. Salafi scholar Albani declared it sahih in his takhrij. Tabari wrote in his tarikh, in 646, 44H, the Muslims with Abdul Rahman bin Khalid bin Walid radiallahu ta'ala anhu as commander entered Rome and the Ghazwa took place. Tarikh At-Tabri under events of 44AH, volume 5, page 212, published by Cairo, Dar al-Marif. In all the above expeditions, neither Muawiya radiallahu ta'ala anhu nor Yazid participated. There were more attacks on Roman cities in the following years. For details, please read authentic history books written by ahl sunnah scholars. Sixth, Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups tried to portray the episode of Karbala as a political event. They tried to make the battle of Karbala look like a political issue between Shias and Sunnis. They placed Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hadrat Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu on one side and claimed their followers were Shias. It is probable that the people who deserted Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu later became Shia, as some of the people who initially supported Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu later became Kharijis. Does this mean that all the people who support Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu are Shia? Shias and Salafis are two extremes in Islam. Ahl Sunnah wal Jama are the people of Sahih Iman. They are the true followers and supporters of Ahl Bayt Adhar. The Salafi practice of placing Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hadrat Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu on one side and claiming their supporters to be Shias and placing Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Yazid on the other side and claiming their followers to be Sunnis is ridiculous. Salafis, Diobandis and like-minded groups claim themselves as Sunnis and they take the side of Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Yazid and blame Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu as responsible for the bloodshed in the Islamic State. Astaghfirullah. The episode of Karbala was the fight between Haq and Batil. It was a battle to safeguard Sahih Iman in the world. And it is because of the ultimate sacrifice of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the real Islam is still alive in the world. It is true that the people who had written letters to Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu later deserted him. But this is also a fact that the real killers of Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu were Yazidi army. Similarly, in their long fight, Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu was on haq and Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu was on mistake. An absolute majority of Ahl Sunnah ulema consider Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu to be an unjust rebel. Some Ahl Sunnah ulema consider Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu's mistakes were ijtihadi. We prefer to keep quiet about Muawiyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Whatever it is, it is proved beyond doubt that Hadrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Hadrat Hassan radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and Hadrat Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhu were on haq. Therefore, a person with Sahih Iman will support Khulfai Rashidin and ahl bayt who were on haq. If someone condemns them, of wrongdoings and supports their enemies, then he will be treated as one among the enemies of Ahl Bayt. It is in Hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam looked at Hazrat Ali radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyida Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, and Imam Hassan and Imam Hussain radiallahu ta'ala anhum, and said, "I am in war with those who will fight with you, and in peace with those who are peaceful to you." Tirmidhi. Ibn Majah, Al-Hakim, Tabrani, Mishkat, etc. Al-Hakim has recorded a hadith 
through Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, The stars are security for the people of earth against drowning when at sea, and Ahl Bayt are a security of the people of the earth against discord. And if any tribe or group opposes my Ahl Bayt, it will itself become fraught with discord and become a party to Iblis. Imam Suyuti, Ihya al Mayyid, bi Fadail, Ahlul Bayt. All right, this concludes the lecture. Before you go, you can find more information of many other Islamic topics like the one we discussed in this course at sahiiman.com slash books. Hundreds of books available explaining multiple Islamic topics up for grabs for free. So do check it out. Thank you for signing up for this course. We hope you had a great time learning about this important topic as we had preparing this course for you. See you again for another exciting learning experience at the Correct Islamic Faith International Academy. Until then, it's goodbye from us at Team Sifia.